he doesn't just always give us the answer. He will put the answer to our destiny and to our purpose inside of something that he has us do that's very unconventional. All right, all right, all right. You're going to learn today. Hey, y'all, what's up? So in today's Teaching with Sunray, we are going to be talking about the power of multiplicity. So I'm going to hop right on into it. The other night, the Holy Spirit woke me up in the middle of the night talking about the fish that had the coin in its mouth, specifically pointing out the number one and four women. And was speaking about how with one fish, the debt of four was paid off. Something like that. It, it was something along the lines. But the point was one, four, and a fish. I said, okay, cool. And so um, I sat with that today. Because I know about this story. I know what happened. Peter, he went and Jesus told him like, hey, go find the first fish that you find and then take a four drachma coin out of its mouth and then pay for both my and your taxes. But there's something deeper here. And that's how we got to this teaching today, the power of multiplicity or the power of multiplication. And so... Um, I'm really just going to highlight the scriptures that emphasizes this teaching to keep it short and concise, okay? Um, if the Holy Spirit leads me to expand, then I will. So, um, Matthew 17 and 27 says, But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin, right? Okay. So y'all know I had to do research into this drachma coin. Essentially, one coin was the equivalent to one day's worth of work, okay? So the payment during Moses' time was that you would bring two days worth of work to the temple, right? But because Peter was paying Jesus's and his taxes, okay, Jesus said that he would find in one fish four times as much, four times the what it takes to work one day in one coin and one fish and one coin four times as much what would be required for the fish i mean for the uh, taxes okay boom i said wow right one fish because i'm thinking like okay well it's so many fish in the sea so how did jesus even know so yes this was a miracle but it more so was speaking about multiplication and one thing I noticed about Jesus and God in general, they are very intentional in what it is that they do. So as I read this, I started thinking, I said, God, it's something fishy about Peter. It's something fishy about Peter. I, it's something fishy. I said, God, I got to dive deeper. So then, of course, there's something fishy about Peter because who was Peter before God called him, before Jesus called him? He was a fisherman, Right. So if we go to, I hope I marked it off. Yes, I did. It's Luke 5. And it's Luke 5, 1 through 11. But y'all already know this. Long story short, Jesus told Peter to put out his net. The net broke because they got so many fish, right? And then Peter and three other men followed. Okay, so... Look, Jesus calls four fishermen to follow him in this one instance. So, because I ain't even going to waste my time filling it with words. I'm just going to get straight to it. Oops. I'm going to get straight to it. Look, Peter, God literally had one person do one thing. And from one large miracle, four fishermen, Jesus got from one act, four fishermen, to follow him and to become fisher of men. That's multiplication on top of multiplication. Because look at it. He did one miracle. He got Peter. They saw the they saw that this miracle was so amazing. He got those three to follow along with him too. And now not only does he have Peter that is now a fish that's going to continue to multiply. But then he got three other people. Multiplication times multiplication times multiplication times multiplication. And that's four to the fourth. 
Okay, and we know four to the fourth. I think that's 64. Don't get me lying because my math might be a little bit off because that's four times four, which is 16, 16 times four, which is, yeah, somewhere up in there, maybe 80. I don't know. But four to the fourth, this is multiplication upon multiplication. And so I'm like, wow, God, there is something fishy about Peter because why, why, why didn't Jesus just have Peter go to the um the money bag for judas to get the money out can i pose to you today that the way our father works is he doesn't just always give us the answer he will put the answer to our destiny and to our purpose inside of something that he has us do that's very unconventional with peter he was a fisherman so the lord knew how to communicate to him through that so not only did he call him from fishing, but he also had him go fish this, uh, go fish a fish, go catch a fish to receive the payment that was needed. And so what I came to the conclusion is I said, wow, Jesus is so strategic because instead of him just telling you what's in you, he will, he will take, he will have you do something that reveals what's in you. It was something fishy about Peter. If we study what the meaning of a fish is, a fish means multiplication and increase. Peter carried multiplicity. Whatever one thing Peter would do, the Lord would always multiply it because he carried multiplicity. It dealt with his purpose as a fisherman because one fish gives birth to many eggs, right? Okay, so what's the whole point here? The prophetic word that goes with this teaching is this. God is saying that a lot of you do not know that you carry the womb of multiplicity. That from one, your one act of obedience, that from your one yes, it will lead to such an increase that the increase is not just for you, but you will all by that one act or one miracle that God does in your life. Do you not know the return that that will yield for the kingdom of God? One act. I had wrote this. I said, in order for Jesus to reveal what's inside of us, he will have us do certain unconventional things. To reveal the multiplicity that was in Peter, he kept doing this one in four. One fish, you get four times as much inside of it for the taxes, right? One act with the fish where the where Jesus, where the Lord told him to get all of this, um, where he got all of this increase. Four men was brought to Jesus. One and four, one and four, one and four. So to someone today, the Lord wants you to know that the power of multiplication rests in you. It rests in that one act of obedience. It rests in that one thing that the Lord is having you do. You may not think it to be much, but we serve a God that focuses on fruitfulness and multiplication. The barren season for you is over. And I'm saying this by the spirit because I ain't write that down. The barren season for you is over. Some of us do not know, and I'm going to keep repeating this, that that one act, all it takes is one, and it leads to multiplication. Do y'all see it right here? Because look, y'all may question like, well, Summer, what do you mean that Jesus will have us do unconventional things or Jesus will have us do something that will reveal what's in us? So instead of Jesus calling Judas a thief, he gave him the money back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It, it revealed his character. Okay. Like, look. And even when it came to um, John and his compassionate heart, his compassionate nature, that was revealed with how close he was to the in the bosom of Jesus. So there are certain acts that the Lord will have us do or certain things in our lives that will reveal what our destiny has and what's a part of it. A lot of you... From one act, you don't even know how much you, how much of an increase. Look, you are a money bag <laughs> for the Lord. You are a fish. Okay. There is something fishy about you. So when I was looking at this and I said, there's something fishy about Peter. I said, wow, Jesus, you did this to reveal to Peter that whatever it is that he does, it'll always be multiplied and increased.
It had nothing to do with him catching a fish. It had nothing to do with him doing that. It was everything about what the Lord was revealing to Peter and how God would use him to be a fisher of men, to be one that thrives off multiplicity. So to that person today, what is that one thing that the Lord is having you do? That you may not see a lot of value to. I see my head in the back now. That you may not see a lot of value in. That you may not see a lot of worth in. But that, in God's eyes, it has brought so much increase to the kingdom. Dear Lord, my Heavenly Father, you are so gracious. You are so mighty. You are so kind. You are the lover of my soul. I worship you day in and day out. Because God, there is no one like you. And apart from you, there is no good in me. God, I come before you. We repent for anything that we have committed or done in your sight, Father, that is not pleasing unto you. Cleanse us, Father. Clothe us in righteousness, Lord. Make us anew. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to come into your presence and to be able to speak forth the words that you have blessed us to live by. God, I pray that you open the eyes of those individuals, Lord, that carry multiplicity. Reveal to them that the weight and magnitude of their destiny is so much greater than they realize. That in one act, that they've yielded such an increase. That they have brought so many souls closer to you. That they have brought so many people to salvation without even realizing it. With one act. Father, reveal to us what's hidden. Reveal to us what's deep within our womb that you are using to accomplish your will and display your goodness here on this earth. I pray, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can draw closer to you in understanding. I pray, Lord, that you lighten each of our hearts, God, with greater revelation of not just who you are, but of what you've called us to. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. That's it, y'all. That's the teaching. Also, make sure on the website, y'all subscribe to the Mellow List. I kind of had that back there just so y'all could look at it. All right. All right. I'll talk to y'all later. All right. All right. All right. You're going to learn today.